Kevin Thatcher, how you doing? Welcome to the Real Freedom EDU podcast and platform. How's everything going, Kev? Everything's fantastic. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak to your group. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Kev, um, this is the this is the new platform that I have. It's called the Real Freedom EDU platform, and uh, and our motto is where you're always one deal away from freedom. How do you like it? That's fantastic. You know, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. You just have to believe it. So it's, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I'm excited. Absolutely, absolutely. So Kev, um, you know, I wanted to have you on the, uh, on the show today because you're like, you get to see what we don't get to see, right? Because we're dealing in our own businesses. We have, we have our business, our few deals or several deals or however many deals we're doing, but you get to see everyone's deal, right? And, um, and, and what I wanted you to, to take some time to talk about, I wanted to start off with the value to the, to the, to the customer, right? The viewer. Um, and, and some of these viewers, they want to know, can I really get into real estate? And can, and, you know, can a newbie investor really get into the game and make money, right? Um, and even some successful investors. We have some successful investors who are out there who, uh, who are kind of doing deals, but not exactly, don't exactly have a system set up. So can people really get into real estate and really create freedom for themselves? Yeah, I mean, listen, absolutely. Uh, you know, what I always say is, you know, you fill a room of, you know, 60 to 100 people for a boot camp, regardless of which boot camp it is. And there's still going to be the same, you know, 95-5. 5% are going to be successful. 5% are going to walk out of that room and actually do something with the material. You know, when we start looking at, at a lot of the, uh, you know, when, when the president got elected, a lot of people started talking about, you know, Trump University and what a scam it is and all this stuff. And I said, well, is college a scam? Because I can put in front of you how many parents spent thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars and on their child's education and they flunked and did nothing with it. So is it the student? Is it the school? I don't believe it's necessarily the school. It's a student. So for those of you that are watching and, and you say, you know, I want, I want an opportunity. I want a bigger opportunity. I want to do something with my life. I want to give up my nine to five job. You can do it. Uh, you can definitely do it. You just need to have the resources, which is, you know, a whole nother topic. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a whole nother training talking about how do you really find the resources. But, you know, we, we've discussed the story with you time and time again, when I saw you just as a, a real estate agent and, and you were just looking for more. And it was just a matter of having someone to guide you down that path, kind of hand holding without holding hands and, and just making sure you have the resources available to be successful. So uh, now's the time more than ever. Now during a global pandemic and people are out of work, or people are home on quarantine, now's the time to right. do the research to be successful. Absolutely. And Kev, let, let's, let's dive a little deeper into this, uh, into the resources and the topic. Uh, let's, let's say, you know, you got a realtor or a real estate investor, they're making 80 to 120 grand a year, 80 to 100 a year. So relatively, they're doing okay for themselves, but there's still a lot of uncertainty, right? Because they're not really sure where the next deal is coming from. How do they go from 80 to 800? How do they go from 100 to a million a year? And do you have investors who do that? And, and maybe what are some of the things that you kind of see those investors employ, some of the strategies or tactics? And, uh, and, and how do you see people make that leap? Yeah, the first, it's, it's not the business. Uh, you know, regardless of what business you run, whether you're a real estate investor, you're a title company, you're a, a hard money lender, it doesn't matter. You know, the first thing you need to figure out is why. Like, like what is your why? Why do you want to achieve business to those levels. There are people who are making 80 to hundred thousand dollars a year and they're perfectly happy. They have no debt. They own their home. They're living a very nice life and, and they don't want more. They're very comfortable with what they're doing. So I think the concept comes down to figuring out why do you want it, right? I mean, that's going to be the first concept. You need to understand like, like, are you doing it for your family? Are you doing it for the money? Are you doing it for the fame? Are you doing, you know, and, and once you start coming down the path of figuring out why, now you just have to figure out the next question, which is the most difficult question, which is how, wow. uh, <laughs> right. right? How? So the why is, is not an easy task. That's probably gonna be uh, a three to six month exercise to really figure it out. Now, now, can you do it sooner? Absolutely. But the reality is, is you know, when you look at the top income earners in, in the entire country or in the world, there's very few. Very few are in the top 10%, 5%, 1%, half percent. Uh, you know, you could look up the statistical data. And, and if you want to make over $100,000 a year, you know, you probably put yourself in the top 10%. So do you want to be in the top 10% or do you want to be higher? 
Uh, and, and part of it is coming up with the, the, the knowing why and then coming up with the how and, and knowing like, do you want to serve more people? Awesome. So in my book, Rescue Your Business, we kind of talked about, you know, where I got started. Oh, there you go. See that? Uh, <laughs> you know, where I got started and, and how I figured out the, the game of networking. Look at that. Highlighted, man. That's a good student. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I didn't so just have, I, I really talk about, you know, they, they have to understand how do you build your dream team? How do you build the foundation of any successful business? You can go out there and do everything. Right, right. Right. I was on a podcast this morning and there was a pretty cool analogy where they were talking about, you know, when you have to go to the bathroom, yes. do you use two toilets? Ah. Think about it. You use one toilet, right? right. You use one toilet. You know, when, when you're looking at, at a pro NFL team, how many quarterbacks do they have? They have one quarterback. One quarterback, right? One quarterback and a bunch of backups. If they had two quarterbacks, would they be a good team? Probably not. Probably not. So it's about mastering the skill yeah. of whatever you want to do. So if you're a real estate agent, you say, well, I'm a realtor and I'm going to, you know, I want to become a lender and I want to become a rehabber and I want to be a wholesaler and I'm going to start doing all this stuff. You're going to realize that you don't have much of a team. Right as opposed to farming out all of those skills that are outside of your box until you figure out how to master the one box. So Absolutely. in the book, what I, what I was starting to talk about at the, at the beginning was in the book, I talked about how I was a mortgage broker, I was a real estate broker, I owned an insurance company. Mm -hmm. I was kind of doing everything from the sense of, I wanted to take one client and I wanted to bring them through the process successfully mm -hmm. with me in charge of all of it because I didn't want to take the chance that someone was going to make a mistake. Right, right. What did I do? I limited myself because right. I, had a, I had this belief that no one can live up to my expectations and I would never be able to give the freedom to someone else to be able to handle those things. But guess what happened? The crash of 2008 came and I learned a very hard lesson that by not building a strong foundation for any one business, mm -hmm. you're going to fail. So the mortgage company goes under, the real estate company goes under, the, the title company, we went from 30 deals to three deals. You right. know, so we learned a very tough lesson and we learned how to build on that foundation of what do you want? Why do you want to do it? And then just figure out how to fill in the pieces of the puzzle. So figure right. out what, what pieces are missing mm -hmm. and build a strong foundation for the one business you want to do. And as I said at the beginning, now more than ever, it's the time to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kev, I mean, you're, you know, that was, that was awesome. That was awesome there. Now let's take it back to the beginning a little bit, Kev. Um, obviously, you're a successful guy now. Everyone in South Florida knows you. Um, you, know, you know, you're known as KT the TK, you know, Kevin Thatcher the title king, right? Uh, you know, if you use that, I, gotta, I might have to get a royalty on, on, on that. Ah, you know, it's funny. Give me a second. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> you know we're live, right? You know we're live when, when I can get up and then come back into the screen. Right, right. Come on. No, no, no. I know the TK, the KT. For, oh, oh, come on, Kev. Unmasking title issues. You might as well leave it on, Kev. You're the mask. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to pay you some royalties on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's good stuff, man. You know, what I want to do, I was, I, we want to go back. How'd you get that? You know, obviously, we know where you are now. You're successful. You're doing 80 to 100 deals a year every, I mean, a month. I'm sorry. You know, about 100 deals a month every month. Uh, what, what, where were you before? You know, how'd you get to this point? You know, um, you know did you, were you always an entrepreneur? Um, no, I was actually a firefighter, which is why if you look at the book on the front page, there's, there's a fire truck there. Uh, that's my fire truck. And uh, so I was a firefighter for many years. And, and, you know, one of the things that I learned, whether it was, you know, let's take it back to high school. So I barely made it out of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did not like school. I didn't like going to school. I had one teacher that took me under his wing. His name was Jim Hennessy. I wrote about him in the book. Yeah. He was a lifeguard. He was a firefighter. He was a politician. And most importantly, he was my teacher. And, and he basically took me under his wing and made sure I passed uh, no matter what, no matter what it took. If I failed the test, we sat down, figure out what could we do? What, what could we do? What could we do? But he built the confidence in me to know that there's more to life than just you. There's more to life than just school. You know, it's really about having these uh, foundational relationships that, that can help take your business to the next level. So then we move on after high school. Obviously, I graduated. I passed. I, I wound up passing all my classes. And he took such a personal interest in me that it made me wonder why, right? Why did a teacher like this really want to take this kind of interest in a student? Mm -hmm. And I figured out that, that like there's more to life than what I knew. And it was about working as hard as you can 
and right. serving more people, right? The harder you work, the more people you serve, the more business you'll have. So then you move into being a firefighter. Uh, so I started, I was a firefighter and I ran the fire safety and security for a high rise hotel in Times Square, New York. I moved down uh, to Florida 20 days before September 11th. And when I worked for the hotel and the fire department, I moved up to captain in just six years. You know, so why? Again, serve more people, serve them right, do the right thing, build a relationship. In the hotel, the same thing. I moved all the way up the food chain up to a supervisor and then eventually left that as well. Then you move down to Florida and it was the same thing. I just started building relationships more and more and more. And I learned that the relationship is more important than the business. I joined a very large networking organization, uh, the largest in the world called BNI, Business Network International. And they talk about giver's gain. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. And people don't understand that that simple philosophy underlying in your life, in your personal life and in your business can create such huge, huge success if you do it properly. So I became the leader in those groups, generating more referrals for everyone else than I ever did for myself. Mm -hmm. And did I care? People say, well, what's in it for you? Nothing. I feel good about helping other people. And then you fast forward in that group two years later, I met the broker of the real estate agency that, that you are an agent of today, mm -hmm. changed my life 14 years ago. I met a uh, broker that owned an agency, a thousand agents, 200 plus deals a month, changed the landscape of my business. That's so awesome. you start thinking about and going back and understanding like, how can you be more successful? Mm -hmm. You know, you look at some of these large wholesalers and hard money lenders, they were never doing business with me years ago. Right. When I was this little timid title company coming to the meetings, doing 10, 15 deals. Mm -hmm. But you fast forward three, four years later, after I had so much extreme value to them, now today, they're my number one client and they wouldn't think about going anywhere else and only using us for their closings right, right. because we've built that level of trust that will, will build a foundation for a lifetime. So when the one, people that are watching this, you have to understand, you need to figure out what is the business you want to get into in order to create a life. Why do you want to create this life? Forget about the money because it's never about the money. And then how are you going to do it? And in my book, I go through a number of different steps. I know you've read the book. Mm -hmm. uh, where we talk about different foundational things that you can do uh, between networking and building relationships and, and creating a business plan and having a dream team. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't want to go through them all on here, but there's so yeah. many tips in the book that basically talk about how I was three quarters of a million dollars in debt. I lost everything in life. And then I eventually turned it around to build one of the largest title companies in the state of Florida. We employ 15 people. We're closing 80 to 100 deals pre-COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and everyone follows us because we just care more about you than we do ourselves. Right. We care more about our employees than we do, you know, ourselves as the owners of the company. So it's always about putting others first and the business just happens to follow. The business follows. Absolutely. Uh I want to talk about um, a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, because you do serve, you know, you're at every meeting, um, you're, you're giving back and, you know, you have the, I got to tell the audience about, you know, if they close the deal with you that they get to go on the boat trip, you know, t tell us a little bit about the boat trip and how that came about the idea and, and everything about that or the yacht trip or the mega yacht, whatever it is, you know. Oh, the mega yacht. Yeah. So, so we started a couple of years ago where we would rent a, a uh, hundred foot mega yacht and, and we took, I think last time we had 294 people on it. I think we can hold up to 400 on the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so we run these events and, and these aren't marketing events. This is not about bringing people on that are prospective clients. Right. You know, this is simply thanking the people who trust us every single day. Mm -hmm. Not just in business. So when we do these events, this is not just business. This is, a, this is business. This is our personal life, our friends, our family, uh, and, and our clients, because our clients are like family. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we try not to go out wide. We try to go deep with our clients. So we try to make sure that we're picking up these clients that are doing, you know, five to 10 deals a month, mm -hmm. as opposed to the one deal a month. Because right. we want to make sure the time that I'm personally investing and my staff is investing in these clients is going to be beneficial to them. So if I'm putting so much effort into helping you build a business plan and helping you market your business, whether it's social media, face-to-face -face marketing, introducing you to people, I want to make sure that we have a true opportunity to 
build a successful business. Now, not that we don't handle clients that are doing one deal. We absolutely do. But the whole idea is we want to make sure that we can invest in this together so we can build a recession-proof business. Because if I can help you build a recession-proof business, you're never going to want to close anywhere else but independence title unless, obviously, you're forced to. So, you know, it's, it's very important for people to understand that that relationship is important to get to hang out with the uh, sphere of influence that, that I have around. Mm -hmm. People always wonder, like, why, why you? Why, why are you so successful? And I'm like, I just changed enough lives. I just touched enough people. Mm -hmm. And it correlated into more business and better relationships with some of the biggest players in town. And some of those players are, are very good friends of mine. And, and that's how it happens because it's always more about the relationship than anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have some people that are, uh, that are you know, getting on the platform that don't know much about real estate at all. All they know is that they're in their job and they've probably read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or they, they've seen you know, Carlton Sheets and they've seen people flip houses. They've, they've heard the radio, you know, uh, those guys, uh, Dan Merrill and those guys doing the radio thing. And, uh, and they're like, man, like, is it, is it real? Can people really flip a house and make 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 grand on a house? Is that, is that possible? Um, you know, let's speak a little bit to that. And also, why, you know, what is a title company? Like, what do we, you know, I didn't know what a title company was before I got into real estate. Like, what, what do you do? You know, why, you know, are you an investor? Are you a realtor? What, what is a title company? What do you, what do you do? Absolutely. Well, first, let's talk about, about them first, and then we'll get to me. Absolutely. Uh, so for the ones that are asking the question, right, it's a, it's a legitimate question. They're saying it's just not possible, right? I, there's no way I can make 30, 40, 50, 60 grand, 100 grand, 150 grand. You know, I always tell people scale. If you scale large, the profit's going to be larger. But even on a smaller deal, can you make 10 grand on a deal? Can you make 30 grand on a deal, which is more money than that person has probably made in the last year? Mm -hmm. So for those people that are asking the question, the answer is no, you can't. Someone like Rob can, mm -hmm. because it's all about your belief system. Uh -huh. So if you automatically put up a roadblock in your head saying, it's not possible, I can't make it. You know, my parents always told me I got to go to work. I got to earn my income. I got to have a nine to five job. Those people are not going to be successful. It's all mine. Rem remember what you asked about earlier is how are you going to scale? Those people will always have a close to six figure income. Mm -hmm. The ones that want to go closer to a seven figure income. And if you look at the title of the book, I'm speaking from, um, you know, my, my own experiences because it talks about the business strategies of a seven figure entrepreneur. So when you start looking at the seven figure, that means when you get into a level of earning mm -hmm. seven figures, you have to figure out like, what have you done right that others are doing wrong? Right. So when I look at some of these wholesalers and say, well, yeah, you're doing a half a million dollars a year in, in net profit. What are you doing right that others are, are not doing? And right. the answer is they're stuck in their head. They're watching webinars and they're, they're on all these Zoom calls. I'll tell you, since COVID-19, I have Zoom exhaustion. I've been <laughs> on three Zoom calls today already, you know, and it's only uh, noon. So, right. Right. you know, it's, so it's about what are you going to do? Are you going to literally turn on and just watch, read all these books and watch all these webinars and watch everyone else make money and then go back to your nine to five job? So let's forget about those people. Let's talk about the, the 20% in the 80-20 rule. The 20% say, I want to do that. Right. Right. When I had the conversation with you, probably, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, you said, I want to do that. I don't want to just be a real estate agent you know, schlepping people around to make 3%. I want to make the 30, 40 grand that they're making, but I don't know how to do it. Right, right. Right. And we engage in that conversation and you pass the test okay. that I gave you to make sure, A, does the relationship matter to you? So I'm going to let you into the circle. I'm going to teach you all of the tips. I'm going to introduce you to all the big players. And do you have what it takes in order to be successful? So you pass the smell test. Once you pass the smell test, now you have that opportunity to grow, which is what you've been doing over the last, you know, several years between wholesaling and being a realtor and fix and flips and, you know, being in, in some of these high level masterminds. So those people that are watching that are that, that 20% absolutely have the right opportunity to do it. Just stop watching TV of everyone else doing it and just do it. Just do it. You know, Nike's very wealthy for that slogan, just do it because, you know, they, they want to make sure that you understand you just need to get out and do it. 
right, right, right. get out and close a deal. Get out and meet some people. Get out and write, you know, write a hundred contracts to get one accepted. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, that was so difficult. Go write another hundred. Right. Maybe next time you'll get better at it. And you'll write two contracts. Right, right. And then the third time, you'll write a hundred offers. You're not going to write three contracts. You're going to write no contracts because failure happens, right? Okay. So you don't want to set the expectation that, that it's all good. You, you're going to fail, right? You are going to fail. You know, when we started one of the local investment clubs, I don't know, 14 years ago, 13 years ago, we started up in, uh, with Lex. I started his group with him. In the first meeting, there were three of us, me, Lex, and one other guy. The second meeting, there were, I think, uh, two other people that were there. So I think it was five of us. The third meeting, it was back to three of us again. <laughs> and now you look at it, you attend it. There's, there's, you know, 60 people in the room. The boot camps are full of hundreds of people. And, and so it's really about just doing it and getting out there and, and having in your head what the plan is going to be. So is my plan to do A, B, and C? Well, now how am I going to do it, right? Because you know your, your what, you know your why, mm -hmm. and now you figure out how. Door hangers, mailers, social media, building capture pages and wholesaling deals. There's many areas of this business um, to lead into your second question that I could do if I wanted to. I could rehab, I could wholesale, I could be a realtor if I wanted, I could be a hard money lender, but I don't because I don't compete with my clients, which tells you a little bit about what Independence Title is, is we're a service provider for the real estate industry. So we basically facilitate two things. One is the holding of the money in the deal. So if you as a buyer are buying a deal for $100,000, you give me the $100,000, give or take a couple of dollars, and then we are going to make sure we take that money and disperse it to the people that need together, whether it's realtors, mm -hmm. uh, state fees, government fees, payoff fees, um, any types of searches, and then we're gonna disperse what's left to the seller of the property as their profit. So that's one fold, that's called being an escrow agent. We're basically holding money in escrow for clients. Mm -hmm. And the second fold is independence title. We're issuing what's called a title insurance policy. Mm -hmm. So that's a one-time policy that a buyer is going to buy when they buy a property that is gonna protect them in reverse from the day they buy it backwards, making sure that no one has any claims to that property. Mm -hmm. So the one question people always ask, well, what about the house? I don't care about the house. That's what your home insurance is for. I care about the right to use the land underneath the house. So I want to make sure nobody can come back and question your right of ownership to that land, yeah. whether it's an old seller, an heir to an estate, a judgment holder, an old mortgage holder, um, an, an ex-spouse, the IRS, anyone that may have a claim to that property, we want to make sure we're doing all of the research and extinguishing any possible option that they could come in and put a claim. And should they come back and put a claim, that's where your title insurance is very important that they'll step in and defend that claim. You know, um, sometimes we forget those are the important parts uh, because they're the technical parts and a lot of people don't really think about it. Uh, talk a little bit about, because I remember, I remember bringing a few deals uh, there um, initially and, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know up from down, left from right, you know, <laughs> and, and I knew that like if I could get it over to a title company and I think... Um, I think uh, Victor was there at the time. Now, now I work with Iris. Uh, Iris is awesome. You know, uh, I know you, you employ great people there. Um, and, uh, and I think I brought the deal to Victor. And I was like, hey, listen. So I got this contract signed by the seller. And I said, um, you know, um, you know what, what, do you, what do I do? Do I send this to you? He was like, yeah, yeah, you email that to me. He's like, now you need a buyer. <laughs> you know? so, so then I was like, yeah, 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 I got the buyer too. And then he was like, you have a buyer? I was like, yeah, I got a buyer. And then uh, he's like, well, email me both the contracts. And, you know, and I was like, then what, then what do I do? He's like, well, we'll take it from here, pretty much. And, uh, you know, I'll let you know, you know, what, you know, what's going on. And I was like, that's it? You just need contracts signed and, like, I'm, I'm good? And obviously there's a couple more steps, but, you know, technically it's, it's almost that easy, right? Like, you get a contract, you get a deal under contract, you find a buyer at a higher price. And they send it to you guys and you guys do all, all what you, so technically you guys are like almost a partner. You're almost coaching a lot of our clients, a lot of your clients, I guess, a lot of our, you know, my colleagues, um, you know, investors and realtors, you're coaching a lot of us on how to do the deal sometimes, right? Yeah. I mean, part of it is picking a title company. So, you know, all title companies are created equal when it comes to title, right? We're going to issue a title policy. Uh, hopefully they're going to stand behind that claim when a claim does come up because it does happen. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and hopefully they're going to manage the escrow money properly and not steal your money. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is a title company is licensed and bonded and insured. And, and so when you pick up a, a standard title company, they should be doing the, the standard job, mm -hmm. right? It's what sets you apart from your competition. What makes you the purple elephant in the room? Right, right. Right. So what makes us stand out from our competition and what helps us stand out from our competition is exactly what you're saying, that we have the ability to handhold that investor that has a question. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have our YouTube channel with over 200 educational uh, videos on there where we talk about every topic when it comes to real estate investing. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that's where we direct people to learn, because we want you to know that we know what we're talking about. Right. Most title companies, you can go and ask any of those questions, they probably wouldn't be able to answer it. So we simply pride ourselves on being a, a platform of education first, mm -hmm. a platform of relationship first, mm -hmm. a platform of commitment first. I'm all in. I'm not 50% in. I'm not in if you have a deal. I'm in mm -hmm. if you have a deal and you need help and you need guidance and you need something to work on and you need to know the ins and the outs and what do you do and how do you do it. Yes, you're not going to come in and sit down in my office until you have a deal under contract. I get it. I mean, that's not going to happen. Uh, but you pick up the phone, you call us, and we're happy to give you whatever guidance you need okay. when we talk about double closings and land trusts and assignments and, and, and lease options and buying at the courthouse auction and title searches and lien searches. You know, we can talk shop where most title companies can't. They just know, I need to do the closing. I need to take in the money. I need to issue the title policy. We need to record, close, and everyone's happy. Right. So that's what sets us apart in the industry and why we're one of the top title companies in the state is because we can stand by your side, which goes back to my firefighter days. We go in the deal together and we leave the deal together. In the book, I wrote about how a firefighter saved my life, stuck with me at the top of a stairwell when the fire was, when the, the, it was flashing over, over my head. Mm -hmm. And I probably wouldn't have made it out if it wasn't for him to help me because I was scared, I panicked, and he helped get me unstuck and out the door. So we do the same thing in business. Mm -hmm. We stand by your side, no matter what it takes, we go all in and make sure that we're gonna get out and get you paid, we get paid, seller gets paid, and everyone's happy. That's awesome, that's good stuff. Um, you know, I think for, you know, as, a, as, a, as an investor, as a realtor, um, you know, we, like I was saying, we don't, we don't put, a lot of emphasis on the the behind the scenes stuff, the actual title insurance. We know things are getting done, and um, some you know you'd be surprised. Some realtors and investors don't even know what title insurance is for. But um, that's another topic. Um, but like, speak to a little bit about like some of the more creative deals, like um, that you guys you guys fund. Because I know you know I've done some creative stuff with you guys where I've gotten into the deal. I knew I had a buyer that wanted this property but didn't know how to structure the deal. So a lot of times, you know, um, newer investors or even sometimes experienced investors, we have to call in and say, hey, listen, Iris, hey, Kev, um, you know, like, I got this deal, I got this buyer, but I don't really know if, the, if I can put this together. And, you know, as, as investors, we want to get as creative as possible, right? But sometimes you guys have to kind of police us and say, hey, you know, you can't, <laughs> you can't do that, but here's how you can get paid and here's how to structure the deal. So talk a little bit about how you guys play almost as like a partner in structuring these deals and putting them together. Yeah, the thing is to remember, again, as I said, we're all in. So we want to make sure the deal is going to close, right? So I want to make sure you get into the deal the best way possible. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, and, and we tell people all the time, we're not real estate attorneys. We're not giving legal advice. We're not accountants. We're not giving tax advice. What we are doing is giving almost 20 years of, of my own personal experience in this business of being a realtor, being an investor, being a mortgage broker, being a hard money lender. Because remember, I talked about at the beginning how I used to do all of that. Right. So my goal and what I teach my staff is we need to first figure out how to get the client that knows their why and just wants to know how. So it goes back to the same thing, right? right? Mm -hmm. You know your why, clearly you're do, trying to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now we need to come to a, a game plan together to figure out how. So we talk about many different things. And if you call title companies, they're going to be like, oh, you can't do double closings. Those are illegal. Yeah. Nope, they're perfectly legal. I remember, I remember when everyone was saying that and you guys were able to close them. And like you talked to another company 
and uh, they'll, you know, they'll kick you out of your office. You talk about exactly. it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's about structuring the deal and it's about just having a, a broad understanding of different types of deals. So I'll ramble off a few, just so you know, I know what I'm talking about, but whether it's a lease option, whether it's a subject to, whether you're buying at the courthouse auction, you want to do a flip, you want to do an assignment, a contract, a land trust, an assignment, a beneficial interest in a land trust. Some of these deals we don't handle because we're not an attorney. Right, right. But you bet I understand the deal and I know how to tell you what's in your best interest of a deal. So if you're looking to do a deal and you want to assign the beneficial interest of a land trust, I'm going to have the conversation with you. I'm going to direct you to buy the book, um, The Florida Land Trust by, by attorney Mark Warda, uh, who wrote the book. And it sits on the, the, the statute, the commission statute for the land trust statute. So, you know, I'm going to guide you to the experts of what you want to do and how you want to do it. If you want to start closing with your IRA and you want to learn, well, how do I partner with my checkbook IRA? We're going to know how to structure that deal. Yes. And more importantly, we're going to know how to tell you that, hey, by the way, that's kind of commingling funds. I spoke to someone the other day and it's like, well, I want to put the deposit up and then reimburse myself and have my IRA. I said, time out. Before you make any moves when dealing with an IRA, it's super important to call the custodian for the IRA, which is the person that manages it, and find out their requirements. They may require them to put up the money. They may allow you to partner with it. They may not allow you to partner with it, but maybe someone else to partner with it. So, you know, just understanding that there are multiple tools mm -hmm. in the investment toolbox. Right, right. Right. There's multiple tools. We just need to figure out which tool is right. And then that's the tool we need to use to get that deal across the finish line. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember a, uh, a creative deal I, I did. Um, it was actually, um, I think, you know, like maybe a couple of years ago. And uh, there was a property called Springs and uh, I had a buyer for it. And uh, I brought the buyer into the property and the buyer wanted it. It was probably worth like 320, 340 or something like that. And uh, he was going to be able to get it for like 239 or something. I mean, I was going to make some money, uh, you know, some, some, the, uh, the original investor, the original wholesaler was going to make some money. And, um, and we put the deal together. Um, uh, the buyer brought in a hard money lender who funded the deal. Uh, and the buyer was supposed to bring like 60K to closing or something like that. Uh, and he only brought 50 <laughs> to the closing. So everyone was going to get their money except like me. I was going to, you know, I was going to get short at 10 grand. And uh, the hard money lender called me and I said, I said, hey, man, you know, the, uh, can you lend the buyer an extra 10 grand? Because he's short 10, 10, 10 Gs. And, uh, and uh, the hard money lender said, no. He said, why don't you just put a mortgage on it? And I was like, you know, just add a mortgage. I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? He's like, just give him a mortgage. I was like, you know, I, I, it's not my property. I can't give him a mortgage. He's like, sure you can. He's like, it's not my property. I'm giving him a mortgage. He said, just put a second, put your mortgage in second lien position. He's like, just draw up a document, a mortgage document. He's like, I can send you one. Draw up a mortgage document. and Tell him that he has a year to pay you 10 grand. So I call up the buyer, you know, and I'm like, hey, listen, you know, uh, you're short and, you know, we really can't get the deal done because you're short me 10, 10 grand. Um, but what I can do, and he's like, he's like, hey, man, you know, I can pay you for it. It's not a big deal. I'm good for it. I'm like, all right, but, you know, like, you know, we got to put something in writing. And I said, how long would it take you for you to get me back this, this $10,000? And he's like, dude, I'll have it in 30 days. I said, so you don't mind if I write a second mortgage agreement and I put a lien on the property, so you're going to owe me <laughs> 10 grand in 30 days. He's like, yeah, no problem. So I go on like Rocket Lawyer. I find a mortgage agreement for like 20 bucks. I think that's what they charge. And, you know, you put in every, you put in the buyer's name, put in the seller's name um, or the mortgagee and, you know, mortgagor. And I did a thing and I, it, was, it was like nine grand, I think, nine and change or something like that. I sent it to him. I told him to get it uh, notarized. He notarized it. I notarized it. Um, I don't even think I got a chance to record it. And like, no joke, like 15, 20 days later, after the deal's done, he calls me back. He's like, hey, Rob, what's your account number? I'm depositing this nine grand into your account. And I was like, oh, man, I love this business. You know, like, so, so I didn't even own the house. I brought him there because, you know, he was a cash buyer uh, investor that called me off another um, listing that I had. Um, and, uh, and we were able to put the deal together. He wanted to go hard money, the whole deal. And he just came up short. And I became, you know, I was, I was, I was a, uh, a wholesaler on the deal. And then I became a hard money lender on the deal and got paid in like 15 days. So it was, uh, I didn't charge him any interest. Um, so it was, it was yeah, cool. Listen, it's, it's, it's about being creative. 90% of the people would have walked from the deal. Mm -hmm. 
Because they're like, I want my money. I want my money. I want my money. It's like, you'll get your money, but you just need to do it creatively because what are you doing first? Are you worried about your money or are you serving more people? Right, right, right. We talked about it earlier, right? So you want to serve more people. So did you serve him properly? Of course. Yeah, of Of course course. you did, right? You did the right thing by him. Did you do the right thing by the other wholesalers? Absolutely. By the seller? Did the seller get out of the the financial crisis they were in? Absolutely. So what happens is you shift your business Mm -hmm. to a you focus as opposed to a me focus. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? So let let me put it back on you and let me serve you right. Let me do the right thing for you. Absolutely. And just creatively, I'm going to figure out how I'll get paid. You know, he uh, he just called me and um, and he's like, hey, you know, if I sold this property, what would I get? And it's like three eighty or four hundred or something like that. So he's like, dude, he he's like, listen, I want to buy another one. You know, I was like, well, let's see, you know, let's see what happens here with uh, with these investments that you know that you got going on. Um, Maybe you could list the property and collect a commission too. No, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, so we're working there. Um, you know, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of success, I guess, a lot of successful people, you know what's the difference, right? Like you said, it's a bit about mindset. So how, how does someone who doesn't have the mindset, right? They're doubting themselves every day. How do they go from, hey, I'm not doing any deals? Because I, I remember, you know, the reason why uh, one of our models is you're only one day deal away from freedom is because, you know, some people don't need 80 grand for freedom. Some people just need five grand. Some people, you know, some people are making, I remember when I graduated from college um, and I was talking to my accountant friend, I said, hey, listen, man, I need to, I need to save 500 bucks. And I was working with Enterprise Rent-A-Car at the time. I need to save 500 bucks a month so that at the end of the year I could have six, you know, I thought 500 bucks a month was a lot based on what you get paid per month. And then at the end of the year, I was like, man, that's like six grand. I was like, if I did this every year, it would take me 10 years to get 60K. I was like, I can't wait 10 years, you know, to just, you know, save up $60,000. So um, let's talk a little bit about the mindset that, the mindset shift that has to happen and what can people do um, because, you know, we all need mindset shifts to get to the next level, right? Because we're all on our own journey. You know, how, do the, how, do, how does someone get from where they are to where they want to get uh, mindset-wise? I mean, intense therapy can help. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you can hire a therapist and, <laughs> you know, but the reality is, is you either, I, I mean, in my opinion, you either have what it takes mm-hmm. or you don't. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what I mean. I'm going to honestly say you're, you either have it or you don't. And if you realize you're one of those that have it, and you just need a little help to find it and how to get there, that's a different person. But for the one that doesn't have it, it's not like you're going to watch this, this, you know, Carlton Sheets webinar in the middle of the night and all of a sudden wake up the next day and be successful. It's just not going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it really is about mindset. I, I think the number one thing that helps me be successful, uh, you know, if I had to put it on, on one main thing, it's routine. If you look at the successful people in this world, Mm -hmm. they have a routine. They get up every day. They do the same thing. So I get up at 5 a.m. every day. I train with a U.S. Marine. I go home. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I go get my coffee at Starbucks. Then I go home. I make my protein shake. I do the same thing. I take care of the cat. I hang out with the family a little bit, take a shower, put on the same clothes, washed but i wear the same clothes every day i wear the same type of shirt the same type of jeans the same type of shoes every single day why so you don't have to think about it so i don't have to think about it one less thing to think about what do i i just buy the same i just buy 30 of the same shirts and 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 20 of the same kinds of jeans and i just know that this is what i'm wearing every single day and on the weekend it's the same thing i'm typically wearing a, a certain type of shorts and a certain type of shirt uh, you know, so it's about not having to think. And then I come to work and I do the same routine. I log in, I check my email, I go say good morning to everyone. So I'm just very routine based. So I think part of it is that you need to have a routine. For those of, of you that, that follow me saw we had um, Tom Ferry on the other day, who's one of the number one real estate coaches Ooh. for realtors in, in the world. Uh, and he talked about just having a schedule and a routine. Mm-hmm. And like literally a schedule like, in my calendar, it says work out with the Marine, right? It's, it's boot camp, and it's in my calendar. Do I know I'm going to get up every day at 5 o'clock and do this? Yes. Is my alarm set to do it every day? Yes. Why would I need it in my calendar? You tell me, because it's important to know what are you doing every second of the day, every minute of the day, 
in order to be more successful? Like what steps can you do today to be more successful tomorrow? Absolutely. How many lives can you impact today to be more successful tomorrow? And tomorrow doesn't mean 24 hours from now. Tomorrow means down the line. Absolutely. Right? Because it takes years. I would say it takes five years to master anything. So mm -hmm. it's not going to happen overnight. Right, right. So for those of you that want to start today, it's going to take you five years to be able to master wholesaling, to be able to master rehabbing, you know, depending on what avenue you want to get into. There's a reason there are so few successful real estate agents. And when I talk and define success, I'm going to say earning six plus figures a year mm -hmm. consistently for five years. There's very few of them. Or do they exist? Absolutely. But there's very few of them. And, and that's what I think is, is one of the most important things when you're talking about success is having a routine, having a schedule and do whatever it takes to get it done. And then step in when you've, you know, like right now, obviously I have a staff full of people and, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of things that I don't like doing, mm -hmm. but as soon as one person leaves, if it's, that's their skill set and that's what they do, guess who steps in to do it? Me. Right. So it's about being able to master your entire operation mm -hmm. and then start filling in people to do this and do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be an expert in social media. You just have to know about social media and then you find the expert to do it. Do when I talk about investing and I talk about, you know, whether I'm investing in private loans or I'm investing in the stock market in a 401k, an IRA, a college fund, a, a 529 investment account for, for my kids. Do you think I know about the investments? Do I know about the life insurance? Do I, I don't know about that stuff. Right. I just know that I need to know mm -hmm. the person that knows it. Absolutely. Right. So that's why people come to me and ask advice because you just need to know the person. Right. And if I can connect you with the person I know that knows it, mm -hmm. you're going to be more successful. You're going to take it off your plate and say, I know, you know what you're doing. I had my, my social media guy the other day said, Hey, did you check out that new dashboard? Cause he built this whole dashboard that shows you where all of your ad money is being spent and all this stuff. And I said, no, he's like, well, why not? I'm like, cause I trust you. I don't need to, to fill my brain with all of this statistical data. I know what you're doing. I know how much I'm spending. I know what the results I'm getting. I don't need to monitor what you're doing. I'm not a babysitter. I have other things I can invest my time in. He's like, well, I want you to look at it anyway. I'm like, well, that's a different story. You want me to look at it for you, I'll look at it. But I don't need to clog my brain with doing that. I just need to know who to call when I need something done because I know title really well. I don't need to know the other things really well. I just need to know enough about it to make the decision mm -hmm. to hire someone that I know I can trust. Kev, since we're, uh, since we're going down that uh, route, um, how important is it for realtors, investors, mortgage brokers, hard money lenders, how, how important is it to, for them to build a team around them? to, you know, to delegate to be, because, because we, can, we all can't be experts at everything, right? Um, and I remember you, you spoke to me before, you're like, hey, listen, Rob, you know, you can't do everything, right? So you got to have your partners, your referral partners. Speak a little bit to, um, to, to that, bringing in people that do the, you know, for, for, for investors, for people that, you know, might follow this, this show. Um, what can they do? You know, how, you know, who could they bring in? You know, what businesses have you seen where people are bringing in other people to, to help them out, but then they can elevate their game? Absolutely. Well, remember we talked about earlier, the toilet bowl and the quarterback, right? And, and what does that mean in business? It means that, you know, your butt can't be on two toilets at the same time. Right, right. And a, a team can't have two quarterbacks at the same time. They can only have one that can take them to the Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole idea behind that concept is that you need to have a team. So let's just talk about, you know, since we're talking about teams, let's just talk about, you know, one of the top NFL teams, right? So let's just say the Patriots, whether you like them or not, they've won a lot of Super Bowls. Now, I'm not a sports fan, but I know enough to watch. I watch one game every year and it's a Super Bowl, right. right? Just because everyone gets together and there's good food. So I enjoy the food. So let's just talk about it, right? What do they have? How many quarterbacks does the team have? One, right? How many head coaches does the team have? One. One, but what does that head coach have? Assistants. Assistant coaches, mm -hmm. right? So when you start looking at the team concept, mm -hmm. if you put yourself on top as the owner mm -hmm. of a team, yeah. now you just simply have the people below you 
that add value to your team. Are they any less valuable than you? No. You just need to put the same value in them, not right. monetarily, but the same value, the same time investment. Mm -hmm. And you put this in all of your, what we call referral partners in our book. We talk about it uh, in the book towards the end. I think one of the last chapters talks about building your real estate dream team. Uh, maybe chapter 13, I think, or 14. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's about having your team. So if I, when I told you earlier, kind of was the jack of all trades. Right. So I would basically find a client, I'd find them their house, I would do their mortgage for them. I would get their home insurance for them. I would do their title insurance in their closing. And in the end, I'd upsell them on some auto insurance because I did that too. And that was my residual income that was building my book of business. Right. It's great, but my butt can only sit on one toilet at a time. At a time. At so time. when do you learn that business? Unfortunately, I learned it when it was too late. Mm -hmm. I learned it when it was too late. Because then I was stuck. When the market turned, I was relying on me and my one or two deals. And I lost big time, right? Until yeah. I was able to finally dig myself out and understand the value of relationships and the value of your dream team and the value of your referral partners. So, you know, like I bank with a very small local bank here in town. Mm -hmm. I bank with them for the last, I don't know, 12 years, 10 years, 12 years. Yeah. And with all this global pandemic going on, everyone, the big talk was the SBA uh, Paycheck Protection Program loan. Mm -hmm. And nobody's getting them, nobody's getting them, nobody's getting them. Guess what I got? I got it. Why? Because I have a relationship with my banker. I got a call today from a bank that I called just to ask at the same time who was trying to get my business. Mm -hmm. They literally just called me today saying, hey, by the way, did you ever get anywhere? Because you know we're able to open up the applications. I'm like, are you literally calling me? I mean, I did this a month ago, a month and a half ago. Um, so, so the value in the relationship. Mm -hmm. There's banks that call me all day long and say, we offer free banking, no fees. No. I'm like, I don't care. I'd sooner pay a little bit of a fee to my bank because I know I have a trusted relationship with my banker. And I know that when I need them, so in 12 years, I didn't need my bank until... COVID-19. And then all of a sudden, everyone needed their bank. And everyone was wondering why Chase and Wells Fargo and Bank of America and TD Bank, they can't get a loan. They can't even get anyone on the phone. One of my mentors banked with uh, Citibank for, for 25 years. All of their businesses couldn't even get someone on the phone. Wow. Here I'm texting my banker updates, what documents, what do we need? What do we do? So it's all about the relationship. And that goes in any aspect of your business. Mm -hmm. If I want to invest money, I want to be a hard money lender. I can go to a trusted professional and say, Hey, I have $150,000. I'd like to be a lender and start returning, you know, so, some interest on my money. And I know that they're going to stand by me, you know, and I think that's the most important thing, which is why a company like ours is so trusted is that when things go wrong, yep. they'll still be by your side. Absolutely. Right. So when, when things go wrong or I lose my money on an investment, I know that that hard money lender is going to still be by my side, that broker, right? I know that my mentors and my coaches and my significant others that are, that help build my business are going to be by my side, whether it's good or it's bad. Even more so now when we're in a global pandemic, having that team is so important to make sure that they're going to stand by your side. Absolutely. Instead of blowing you off. So it's very important to make sure you build a successful what I call your real estate dream team of professionals. You don't need them all today, but you definitely need to lean on people to, to get their knowledge. Absolutely. It's easier than learning it yourself until you master the art of that business. People call me all day long saying, you want to invest in this business? No, you should really do that. No, I know what I do really well. I can just go find one client doing three closings a month. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another 30 plus closings a year. Let me invest my time in that right, right. and investing in some juice that I'm going to sell or some hair supply, you know, that I'm going to sell just because I have a good network of people and everyone's going to sign up because they believe me. Right. It's that network marketing model. They believe you until there's nothing left to believe. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. And then you've ruined it for the next time. Yeah, absolutely. Kev, you have a, um, you have a magic uh, portal, right? A time portal. And it takes you back a couple of years and it takes you to 18, 20, 17, whatever age you want to go back to. And this portal takes you back to that time. 
what do you do different? What do you do the same? How does that, how does that go? Well, um, because I, I felt the crash, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, I would want to learn the successful strategies. And if I had to think back in time, and you have all the experiences be, that you have, by the way, you have the knowledge, but you go back in time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so absolutely. So what I would do is I would actually go back in time to the early stages of where my grandfather, who, you know, has unfortunately is no longer alive today, mm -hmm. built such an amazing business and an amazing life and had a wonderful family uh, from his parents all the way down. I would probably go back to the early entrepreneurial days of him. And then I would be some type of apprentice mentor ship with him in order to learn the things that he knew because when he was in the hospital and, and obviously not doing so well, I was the only one that was there with him every single day. I took off of work for, for two weeks straight, stayed in the hospital. And we had the best conversations talking about business and talking about success and talking about family. And I wish I would have done that many years ago just to be able to have those conversations, whether we recorded it on video, just to know like, why you? Why did you have such a wonderful family? Why were you married for, for 70 plus years, almost 80 years? Why did you have a successful factory? Why did you never wanna go back to Cuba? What did you know that others don't? Everyone's dying to go back there. What did you know about that that you don't want to go back there? And I look at him and I say, he, he, he was a person that loved traveling, retired at an early age, mm -hmm. never had any debt, no credit cards, no mortgages, no car payments, nothing, bought everything cash. Mm -hmm. So what did you know differently from let's say if he passed at 90, so let's say, what did you know 70 plus years ago, 60 years ago, when you were first getting into the business and, and what did you do differently? And I think that's where I would go to learn from someone I know because so many people watching this are watching these you know, late night infomercials or they're watching the, this video of some guy saying how successful they are and they're buying millions of, of dollars in real estate with no money. Mm -hmm. Do you know if they're successful? Mm -hmm. I know if my grandfather was successful because I'm managing his estate right now. So I know what he had mm -hmm. and I know that that's the truth. So you need to be a strong person, not to believe everything that you're seeing played out on TV or on YouTube or on the internet, on Facebook, because a lot of that's not true. Mm -hmm. Tie yourself with the proper team Mm -hmm. root yourself with the people that you know don't be afraid we've had this conversation before no, absolutely. And i know the person that that we had it about talking about ask them for their tax return mm -hmm. before you invest money in them right right i'm all for giving someone 10 grand 20 grand 30 grand for mentorship if you're going to learn something but i want to see their tax return to know what they're doing and i remember the conversation when i had it with you Absolutely. And then you came in my office and I turned on my screen and I showed you my tax return to show you that I have nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. I'm the real deal. I have nothing to hide. I'll show you my taxes. I'll show you mm -hmm. my tax return. I'll show you how much money I make. And mm -hmm. I'll show you how much I'm here to just empower you to the next level because I don't care what I get out of it. Mm -hmm. I care of what you would lose and what you would, how you would suffer, your family, your friends, what type of suffering would happen mm -hmm. if I led you down the wrong path or if I sold you a bill of goods that I'm not really doing myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying people don't have what it takes and maybe don't have the money, but if you're truly that successful and you're truly teaching on a platform, teaching people how to be you know, millionaires in real estate, you better be a millionaire yourself. Mm -hmm. You better be earning seven figures plus mm -hmm. a year. We're not talking 10, I'm not talking you got to be this super wealthy person. Yeah, you're talking about the guy that, uh, that we, um, that was asking, he was asking me to invest like five grand or 10 grand um, in his, you know, whatever it was. And, and it's all good. I'm yeah. all for it. If you it's want cool. to invest it, it's great. And I, I have no problem. And I follow a lot of these people, mm -hmm. but I will tell you for every one I follow, there are 10 that I follow that aren't truthful. Right. That I know the true lives they live. Mm -hmm. I know the cars they drive are over leveraged. I could research mm -hmm. their house to know that they're over leveraged on their house or their house mm -hmm. is in foreclosure and they just talk a big game. Absolutely. So Absolutely. 
more important than anything is relationships, mm -hmm. building your dream team with people you know, you like, and you can trust, which takes time to get the guidance, which is why the people watching can reach out to you for mm -hmm. guidance because you're someone that they can trust. You're someone that they can confide in and say, you know what, I'm not doing so hot. No, I lost my job. I only have $500 in the bank. I go back a lot of times when I, uh, uh, when I talk about Lex and I talk about his, one of his first students that borrowed the, the $5,000 coaching program, I think it was 5,000, maybe 2,500 coaching program mm -hmm. money from his grandmother in Russia. He was making $6.25 an hour working at the Wendy's drive through Completely changed his life, came in my office, closed three deals in one day and put like 32 grand in his pocket. Come on. Can't be making, that. Probably took him two years to make that at, at Wendy's. So, you know, the whole idea is that, you know, we want to make sure we're adding as much value to the people that are watching this, but we want to make sure they don't buy into right. the rah, rah, rah. The rah, absolutely. absolutely. Right? Don't buy into the rah, rah, rah. Buy into the, you're the real deal. You're doing deals. I want to hang out with people that are doing deals like you. I want to see those people. I want to know who's real in this business. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to ask them. Ask them for, for proof of what they're doing. Right. Not just testimonials. I can give you a thousand testimonials, but if I can't show you I've built a real successful business, how can I give you business advice? Right. I'm not successful myself. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Sorry, I, I rant on when I talk about that. No, no, Kev, Kev. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of what we wanted. You know, we, my questions, I'm sure, wouldn't you know, cover the breadth of what we wanted to talk about, but you, you went in deep, you went in hard, you let everybody know what, why you're the title king, right? I just, hate, I just hate seeing people get burned, right? I don't want to see anyone get burned and, and be put in, in a bad position when they say, you know, I, I put it on my credit card. Now now I'm going bankrupt because, no, you know, I invested in the wrong person. In the wrong person. No, I agree with you, Kev. I agree with you 100%. I appreciate you coming on the, uh, on the platform. Uh, there's the Thank Real you. Freedom EDU podcast. Kev, where can people find you online? Or uh, um, You can just Google myself, Kevin Thatcher, Google Independence Title. Mm -hmm. Uh, our website is uh, titlerate.com. You mm -hmm. can see tons of information on there. It's a link to our YouTube channel, a link to our calculator, a link to our books, our step. Everything is pretty much at that central port, which is uh, titlerate.com. And uh, any questions, you can always email our office, call. My staff is very helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't always have to get me. If I'm not here, you can usually talk to anyone. Uh, and it's just about adding value and, and making sure we can help take your business to the next level. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, guys, remember um, it's real freedom EDU and uh, we we're always one deal away from freedom. Uh, we're here to educate um, and get, get people into real estate, get people closing deals. And, um, and we're here to be a resource and add value. Thanks Kev. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Have a great day. Stay safe, buddy. Absolutely. Talk to you. Bye. -bye.